China is planning to create a massive and the most powerful dam the world has ever seen with a price tag of $137 billion. From Changjiang to Jinzhajiang, the Senya Jitwan is the largest and the largest of the world's largest dam. In a remote part of the Tibetan Plateau, surrounded by towering mountains and deep gorges, this mega project could generate enough clean energy to power the entire UK for a year. But there is a problem. This site also sits in a dangerous earthquake zone. So the question is, how China is pulling this off? And if they could, it would reshape South Asia's power balance. But first, it must overcome nature's biggest challenges, right? So, let's see how they are doing it. For the past 70 years, China has shown a deep love for engineering. They have broken records in almost every industry, building more and bigger than most others. Hydropower is no exception to this. Right now, China has around 87,000 dams. Some reports say this is because with 1.4 billion people, managing water is very important. Not only that, but China has also changed the paths of many major rivers to speed up development. However, compared to what they are working on now, everything else seems small. Even at one point, someone even suggested using a nuclear weapon to blow up a dam. Thankfully, the Chinese government said, no, we're not doing that. So this new project is something else. It has the most amazing potential for hydropower on Earth. But turning that power into reality won't be easy. Dr. Ruth Gamble, an expert on Tibet's environment, culture, and climate history, has helped uncover key details about China's mega dam. She's a senior lecturer at La Trobe University in Melbourne, Australia, and has spent years studying the Yarlung Tsangpo River, which is part of the Brahmaputra River. This is the very place where China plans to build a 60 gigawatt super dam, a project that, if completed, would generate three times more electricity than the world's largest dam today. That much power could light up tens of millions of homes, making this one of China's greatest engineering feats. But it's not just the size that makes it so challenging. The dam is supposed to be built in a remote and rugged part of China, a place few foreigners have ever set foot in. This mountainous region is prone to landslides, earthquakes, and extreme weather, making construction incredibly difficult. Even transporting materials to the site would be a massive achievement on its own. And there's another issue. China isn't the only country that relies on this river. India and Bangladesh, which share the Brahmaputra River, are deeply concerned about how this project might affect their water supply. With climate change already making river flows more unpredictable, a dam of this scale could reshape water access for millions raising serious tensions across the region. With so many challenges, you may ask, why China is even considering this project? Let's understand why. Simply put, China needs a massive amount of electricity, twice as much as the US, and eight times more than Russia. Right now, most of that power comes from burning coal, the dirtiest energy source out there. Coal produces way more emissions than alternatives, especially hydropower which is why China is shifting toward renewable energy. To meet its growing demand and reach net zero emissions, China is investing in solar panels, wind farms, tidal energy, and of course, hydroelectric dams. Since the 1950s, the country has built tens of thousands of dams, including the world's largest and most powerful, the Three Gorges Dam. But now that most of China's internal rivers have been dammed, the focus has shifted to major international rivers, and China has plenty to choose from. That's because China controls most of Asia's water supply, thanks to the Tibetan Plateau. Sitting at an average altitude of over 4,500 meters, this massive region is five times larger than France and packed with glaciers and ice. It holds so much frozen water that it's called the Earth's third pole. As this ice melts, it feeds some of the most important rivers in Asia, the Indus, the Ganges, the Mekong, and the Yarlung Tsangpo. This is why the plateau is often called the Water Tower of Asia, and China's control over it gives them immense power over the region's water supply. 
There's an ancient idea that a sacred mountain in western Tibet is the center of the universe, with four great rivers flowing from it. These rivers aren't just places where people live, they support the largest agricultural regions across China, India, Pakistan, and Southeast Asia. In fact, the food bowls of these nations are all found along these waterways, making them critical for survival. If an outsider wanted to control Earth's resources, they'd start with the Tibetan Plateau, because it holds the water supply for nearly half the world's population. That's what makes these rivers so important, not just for survival, but also for power. For China, they offer a huge source of renewable energy and a way to influence their downstream neighbors. We'll get back to that geopolitical impact later, but first, let's focus on the river at the center of China's mega-project, the Yarlung Tsangpo. Depending on where it flows, it's also called the Xiang or the Brahmaputra. Thanks to its massive whitewater rapids and towering waterfalls, many call it the Everest of Rivers, and that's exactly where China wants to build its super dam. To keep it simple, let's focus on the Yarlung Tsangpo. It begins at the Angry Glacier, flowing more than 1,000 kilometers east before reaching Namsha Barwa Mountain. From there it turns south, flowing through India and Bangladesh before emptying into the Indian Ocean. This river is incredible. It's the highest major river in the world and at nearly 3,000 kilometers long, one of the longest. As far as we know, no one has ever traveled its full length and it's easy to understand why. The part of the river where China plans to build its dam is next to the Indian border, making it a remote and isolated area. It took the British ages just to figure out where the river even flowed in this region. The exact spot China wants for the dam is called the Yarlung Tsangpo Gorge, a place sacred to Tibetan culture. Locals believe it's home to a hidden entrance to the spirit world. Inside the gorge, different ethnic groups live. To the north are the Tibetans, and to the south are the Adi people. In between, there are the Bopa people. The Tibetans believe that a goddess's head rests on the Tibetan plateau, her body curves along the river, and her feet stretch into the Assamese plains. Because of this, they see the whole river as not just a sacred site, but as the embodiment of the goddess. But China isn't interested in this place because of its spiritual importance. Instead, it sees the perfect spot for a massive hydropower project, thanks to the land itself. As the river moves through the gorge, it makes a huge curve around the 7.7-kilometer-tall Namcha Barwa Mountain in what's known as the Great Bend. Here, the water drops more than 2,000 meters in altitude. To put that into perspective, the Grand Canyon is only 1,857 meters deep at its lowest point, making the Yarlung Tsangpo Gorge nearly three times deeper from the riverbed to the mountain peak. This isn't just deep, it's one of the steepest river descents on Earth. The river starts at over 3,000 meters and within just 100 kilometers, it drops to only 600 meters. That kind of drop creates incredible energy potential which is why China wants to build its super dam right here. But this extreme landscape also makes it one of the most remote and difficult places to reach. Because it's so hard to get to, scientists are still uncovering new species in the area every year. Some of them are mammals that have never been seen before, discovered through camera traps in the dense wilderness. Finding brand new mammals in 2025 is almost unheard of, Yet this region continues to surprise researchers. But while it's a biological wonder, it also presents a major challenge. China has to figure out how to build a dam in one of the toughest locations on the planet. It sounds unbelievable, but the area is so remote that there wasn't even a major road open year-round until 2013. Still, the hydropower potential is just too massive for the Chinese government to ignore. Despite the rugged mountains, China has already developed hydropower on the Yarlung Tsangpo. There are several smaller dams further upstream, like those at Zhangmu, Gyatsa, and Jiexu. But these are nothing compared to the planned 60 gigawatt super dam. Details about how they'll build it are unclear. Either the government hasn't figured it out yet, or they don't want anyone else to know. 
There are two possible ways they could do it, and both come with major challenges. One option is to build a series of smaller dams down the gorge, but that would cause serious damage to the ecosystem. The other option is to dig a tunnel from the highest part of the river to the lowest, releasing water through it to generate power. But that would send the water rushing out near the Indian border, which could create political tensions. So far, the second option seems more likely. In cases like this, it often makes more sense to use a hydropower system that follows the natural flow of the river rather than blocking it completely. This approach called a run of the river system. This type of hydropower system is already used in many places, from Brazil to the United States, and of course in China. Instead of creating a massive reservoir, the water is simply redirected from a higher point on the river to a lower one. As it moves, it rushes through a power station, spinning turbines and generating electricity. The concept itself isn't new, but making it work in the Yarlung Tsangpo Gorge is an entirely different challenge. The plan would involve drilling a tunnel straight through Namcha Barwa Mountain, cutting across the Great Bend. This tunnel would allow water to bypass the long, winding section of the river and drop thousands of meters in altitude before reaching a power station downstream. If successful, this could create an enormous amount of electricity, but drilling a tunnel through such a remote and rugged mountain is no small task. The engineering challenges alone make this one of the most difficult hydropower projects ever attempted. It wouldn't just be a single power station. Some reports suggest there would actually be nine separate hydroelectric facilities. As the water exits the tunnel, it would pass through each one, generating electricity at every stage. This setup would maximize power production, making the most of the river's steep drop. If the tunnel took the shortest possible route through the Great Bend, it would still be around 40 kilometers long. Another possible path suggests a tunnel between the towns of Pai and Medog, which would be about 50 kilometers long. That's the same length as the Channel Tunnel connecting the UK to mainland Europe. A longer tunnel might make more sense if it provided better access to materials and services at both ends. No matter which route they choose, experts estimate this tunnel could carry around 2,000 cubic meters of water every second. That means the project could generate up to 300 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year, three times more than the Three Gorges Dam, which produces around 100 billion. But despite this massive power output, the dam itself wouldn't look as big as the Three Gorges Dam. The true scale of this project isn't in its physical size, but in the sheer force of water rushing down from the mountains. The Three Gorges Dam relies on its massive size to generate power, but the Yarlung Sangpo Gorge already has nature's raw energy. Its steep drop makes it one of the most powerful rivers on Earth. So instead of building something huge, China just needs to harness that force. But this project is anything but easy. Experts say it could be the most complex and expensive hydropower project ever attempted. And the biggest risk isn't just the remote location, it's the ground itself. The gorge sits on the Indus Tsangpo Suture Zone, a fault line formed when India crashed into Asia. These tectonic plates are still shifting, making the region extremely prone to earthquakes. In 1950, a massive 8.6 magnitude quake hit the area, one of the strongest ever recorded. With this kind of seismic activity, building a dam here is a serious gamble. The 1950 earthquake was so powerful it was felt in Kolkata and even disturbed waters in England and Norway. It killed over 700 people, triggered landslides that blocked the Yarlung Sangpo for eight days, and when the natural dam burst, a seven-meter wave killed 500 more. Similar earthquakes have struck multiple times in the last century, and it's not a matter of if but when the next one will hit. If that happens after the dam is built, the destruction downstream could be unimaginable. Landslides are another major threat. In 2021, a melting glacier crashed into the river near the Great Bend, creating a blockage visible from space. Just last year, a glacial flood destroyed a small dam in Sikkim, killing 41 people and more than 100 were missing. Now imagine that happening to a dam of this scale. 
the consequences wouldn't just be disastrous for China, they'd be catastrophic for its neighbors too. This project could spark an international crisis involving two countries with unresolved borders. Though there's no official confirmation, signs point to the government's commitment. A map from 20 years ago highlighted the Great Bend's hydropower potential, and recent planning documents mentioned development on the lower river. The fact that it's in China's five-year plan shows the project's significance. Now it feels like China is aiming for something groundbreaking, similar to their moon mission. The project has also been discussed publicly by Yan Jiang, chairman of Power China. The company in charge of construction has confirmed that the project will generate 300 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year, playing a key role in China's net zero goals. With everything pointing to the project moving forward, China's downstream neighbors are bracing for the impact. If the Yarlung Tsangpo's flow is disrupted, millions in India and Bangladesh could suffer. People often think dams just control water, but they also trap sediment. That's a big deal because nearly all of Bangladesh is built from sediment carried down from the Himalayas. For centuries, farmers in Assam and Bangladesh have relied on this natural process. Every monsoon season, fresh layers of fertile soil spread across their fields. If the dam holds back that sediment, those lands could lose the rich nutrients they need to stay productive. With less sediment reaching the fields, soil fertility could decrease, making farming harder. Some believe Chinese scientists might find a way to let more sediment through, but it's unclear. The hydropower station could also disrupt the river's flow, causing water shortages or floods downstream. Farmers in India and Bangladesh, already struggling with climate change, could face even bigger challenges. India plans to build a 10 gigawatt dam to manage its water, but this could worsen the situation for Bangladesh. Now this project is not just about water, it's about geopolitics. When one country controls the flow of water to another, they hold a lot of power. This could give upstream neighbors like China the ability to use water as a tool to influence those downstream, like India and Bangladesh. For these two countries, this is a major concern, especially with their already complicated relationship marked by border disputes and competition for resources. In 2020, tensions reached a peak and the two armies clashed, leaving 20 Indian soldiers dead. While we're not saying China's super dam will lead to war, it could make an already fragile relationship even more strained. As the climate changes, water will become an even bigger focus for global competition. The challenge for China then might be figuring out how to harness the river's power without angering India or harming the environment, something that would take technology as advanced as space exploration. The future of China and India's relationship is just one of many questions tied to this mega project. As the world's largest electricity consumer, China has a responsibility to focus on renewable energy, but its neighbors also rely on the river that has nourished them for centuries. We don't know when the project will begin or how much it will cost, but China's ambition to even consider it shows just how far they're willing to go. They've done what others thought impossible before. So if anyone can make it happen, it's likely them. Now the only question left is, will they succeed? And what will the consequences be for India and Bangladesh? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos like this. See you in our next video. Until then, take care and thanks for watching.